it's the question that drives us here. It's the question that brought you here. You know the question, just as I did. What is Lit RPG? First appearing in Japan, then exploding in Russia, China, and South Korea, Lit RPG, or literary role-playing game, is what it sounds like. A story that takes place predominantly within an RPG game setting. Most people's first experiences with the lit RPG genre come from the Japanese manga Sword Art Online, or one of the translated Russian lit RPG novels. As for the definition, as an emergent genre, nobody really knows what that would be yet, and there's been more than one attempt to figure it out. Kong, one of the early American writers in the genre through his own self-published book series, who calls himself the father of modern American lit RPG, has tried. He said lit RPG should include clearly defined leveling mechanics, stats, and numbers. But I think we can boil it down a bit more by looking at what it is at its most base level. I think we can find three pillars that all lit RPG have in common, and that will weed out stories that are similar but not really in the spiritual vein of the genre. Here's the three things a novel must have to be considered lit RPG, according to me. For the first pillar, let's start at the beginning. Why does lit RPG exist? What is the appeal of watching other people play games? Ironically, the biggest attractors are the people who love watching games. They know that a game played at the highest level is fascinating to watch. The important thing here is that you understand the mechanics, the rules, and the stakes. For sports like football and soccer, it's clear, and most people have a basic understanding of how those games are played. That makes these games very accessible, while RPGs can be complex, confusing, and alienate a lot of people, especially people who don't play video games. If you don't know the rules or the risks the players are taking, you're not going to be invested in what's happening. Take for instance the Zerg Rush. In StarCraft II, the technical strategy is called the Six Pool. It's a game strategy where you sacrifice defense and maximize a fast, aggressive offense. If you catch your opponent off guard, you win. If they attack you back in absolutely any capacity, you'll fold and the game is over for you. In football, there's a lot of all-in plays, but we'll compare a six-pull to the four verticals. Basically, this is the strategy we did as kids, because like six-pooling, this play is as mindlessly easy to execute as it is effective. It's basically where the biggest kid on the playground with the good arm plays quarterback and just says, screw it, everybody go deep. And the defense is quickly overwhelmed by multiple receivers, but it leaves you open, and the opposing team can just sack the defenseless quarterback. It's really all or nothing. In either of those analogies, if you saw them happening in front of you, you'd only realize the severity of the risk in the context of the mechanics that you already understand. It's understanding the game's rules that makes watching people play it interesting. Rolling back, trying to warp in more stalkers, but like you said, we his stalker count is low. He cannot warp in that many more, and Idra just has a seemingly endless torrent of broodlords coming. I mean, he's had hundreds of broodlords made this game at the very least, and oh my gosh, Void Rays now out on the field, and it looks like there's some Zerglings doing a counterattack in the main. The Void Rays, all hallucinations, doing absolutely no damage whatsoever. There's the blink up onto the high ground, just trying to distract Idra. Those hallucinated Void Rays almost fully charged, Wheat. And Idra left the game? Oh. Oh my goodness, Idra. Now, Wheat. When I first played Brood War, someone said, wouldn't it be funny if you hallucinated a bunch of carriers and your opponent just left? That is what we just saw here at MLG. So what is the first rule for a novel to be a lit RPG? The story contains a defined game system. This world can't be real. It has to be manufactured somehow. This isn't dimensional travel. You're not going a step over. You're going a rung down. This is a sub-world to our own. This reinforces game as a setting. We're not new to this concept. Tron is a great example of a lit RPG story. Tron was inspired by Pong, which is the first and most rudimentary computer game. That means even at the very first appearance of video games, people were imagining exploring that virtual space. In it, the main character is transported into a game and must learn how to navigate the world he finds himself in and compete in structured games that the viewer can understand in order to overcome the computer system overseeing the game world. It's important that we distinguish between watching people play and actually joining them within the virtual world. So, for the second pillar, takes place predominantly within a virtual world. So we have thousands of examples of people in imaginary worlds, following rules and mechanics dictated by whatever system created them. For Alice in Wonderland, when she falls down the rabbit hole into an alternate world beneath her own, she has clear stakes and risks defined for her. One that makes you larger, and one that makes you small. Neo is living in a virtual world, with game mechanics and rules for the programs and the agents that hunt them, 
we see him learn and improve at the game, increasing his in-game power, just like leveling an RPG character. So why are these not lit RPG? Because meta content and in-game knowledge is vital to a lit RPG. If a character doesn't know they're in a game with a defined set of rules, they can't act based on that knowledge, which is a key part of any game. Watching a sports story with a guy in a football field, unaware that he needs to score touchdowns to win, isn't a compelling story. And that could be overcoming challenges like Rudy, or being forced to fight to the death like Rollerball. Even something like the film The Running Man is a great example of high stakes, even though it takes place within a game. It's a game between life and death. <laughs> And that's what Lit RPG is, a sports story, where the sport is a video game. So, the characters know they're in a game. You can argue that while The Matrix is not a Lit RPG story, the sequels are. That is an easy way to explain why the second two films feel so tonally different, and in many ways feel like unrelated films to the first. The story shifts from a man discovering a larger world he's unfamiliar with and overcoming his personal limitations, to a man fully in control of his game persona and intentionally entering a virtual world that he treats more like a combat simulator. This isn't to say that lit RPG must sacrifice story for action, but action is an integral part of any adventure-oriented RPG. Even the most dialogue-heavy games like Planescape Torment have action. If the characters know they're in a game, the story can take advantage of the kinds of meta humor and content that has become a staple of the genre. Ernest Cline in Ready Player One uses copious meta and pulp culture references to flesh out his virtual world and it wouldn't have been the same without it. More and more people are growing familiar with video games, virtual worlds, and the rules that exist within them. We can watch people play League of Legends with the ease our dads used to watch football. As people have less and less time to commit to play a real RPG, these books give us a glimpse into what we imagine our characters to be, without the time and money investment. We get to watch expert players playing complex games expertly. So the three pillars of a lit RPG in our definition are the story contains a defined game system, takes place predominantly within a virtual world, and the characters know they're in a game. With the release of Ready Player One and the Jumanji reboot, it's clear that the genre is hitting all at once through every media channel, so it's everywhere. I have my own free ongoing web serial on Royal Road you can check out called Sure Winter. That's a lot like uh, Wattpad. If you want to check out Lit RPG for yourself, Sword Art Online is available on Netflix, both in English and subtitled. Or you can jump over to Amazon and browse the hundreds of lit RPG books available there, and there's more every day. For more info, you can check out Alaron Kong for more lit RPG information. Check out the Lit RPG podcast from Geek Bites. Ramon puts a lot of effort into it, and he's great, so check him out. Or go to the litrpgforum.com to connect and discuss lit RPG with other fans. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Thanks. Thanks so much.